All right, if I look a little frazzled, that's just because I have had the most stressful and exhausting drive of my life. Seven hours, 441 miles, Baton Rouge to Dallas, back home. I'm sitting here in front of my house, finally. Of battling 20 to 30 mile per hour crosswinds. It was insane. That was like, if this was your very first time ever driving a leisure travel van, you probably would have stopped off at the nearest dealer and put a for sale sign on it because it was crazy. Now, as you know, if you've watched my videos before, you know, one of my favorite things is driving the leisure travel van. So we just took a nine day trip down to Florida where we uh, had the uh, privilege of uh, being involved with the Flamingos Florida Leisure Travel Van Travel Club. Absolute blast, by the way. I'll do a video on that later on. But I wanted to give you a real insight into what this trip, it's about almost 2,500 miles round trip, Florida or Dallas to Florida and back. Um, going down was an absolute dream. Beautiful weather, absolutely clear skies, just beautiful all of the way. But coming back, oh my gosh, especially today, we hit these winds, insane. In fact, uh, my crosswind assist came on over a dozen times driving on the interstate, I-49, I think it is, and then I-20 from Baton Rouge up here to Dallas. Um, and if you've never experienced that before, 65 miles an hour down the interstate, all of a sudden a crosswind is just slams into you. And that crosswind uh, assist comes on, which basically just slams on your brakes automatically here in the Mercedes-Benz chassis. It's one of the safety features. It scares you to death, I mean, the first time, and then, you know, then you kind of get used to it. But my gosh, it is insane. So anyway, we endured that, but we are back. But we had a fantastic trip. So I wanted to take a moment, tell you all about what happened, what went wrong, which not really much went wrong. Usually on a long trip like that, several things can go wrong. Um, and so, but I'll show you a couple of things. Um, but then I'm gonna, I'll go back to the office where I'll set that camera up and get a little better audio and all of that stuff, where I will talk about um, how much it cost in fuel. Uh, so, I mean, it was insane. I saw almost $6 diesel on this trip. Really, really crazy, right? So I'll go over all of the fuel costs. I'm also gonna go over all of the RV parks we stayed in and RV park uh, company to avoid. Um, and just how much fun we had and just kind of give you the overall. But let's go around and I'll kind of talk about uh, kind of what issues we had on the coach this trip. Um, and then we will talk about what it cost in fuel, all of that good stuff when I get back to the office. All right, inside all of this great stuff, the equalizer system worked like a champ. The slide worked like a champ. AquaGo worked like a champ. The, de the generator, I only started it once. I left it, let it run for about an hour under load just to exercise it. Had not exercised it in a while. Of course, my Lithionics battery, my 3000 watt Xantrex worked like a charm. Used it several times. Then let run the air conditioner for the dogs while Janet and I uh, got out of the coach and did some fun stuff. So all of that worked like a charm. Now then, one of the things, we were in Florida, so it was super humid. Now, it's humid here in Texas in the summer, but Florida, uh, it was really humid on one day. And what I noticed is on these air conditioning vents that um, we had not just moisture on it, but literally drops uh, of water coming down on this one, as well as this one, and even that one back there. Now then, never happened to me before. So if you know if this is normal in a humid climate, put that in the comments down below. Or if you think I have an issue, got some sort of a leak uh, from the air conditioner condensation coming down through the vents, let me know about that as well. Put those in the comments. After we got out of Florida, out of that humid, ran the air conditioner and it never happened again. So I'm assuming it was because it was super, super humid. Now then, Everything inside the coach just worked like a champ, had zero issues. I only had one issue, but it was not the leader travel van's fault. And let's go outside and I'll tell you about that. All right, so before we do that, let me just tell you, this thing, if you saw my uh, review of me putting this thing together, I love this thing. This thing's going with us every single time. It, I mean, it worked like a champ. Absolutely love it. It 
didn't move a bit. It rained terribly, I mean, a ton while we were there and sometimes, and kept everything inside dry. As you know, I've got a anti-wobble uh, uh, part in there. It all locks up. I mean, as you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't wobble at all. Did a fantastic job on that. Now then, here's where we had the problem. And it was not, again, this was a man-made problem. But let's just open this up and I'll show you what happened. Now then, I keep my leisure travel van at National Indoor RV Center, which has a valet service. It's kept indoors um, all the time, plugged in, and when we want it, oh, oh, by the way, if you don't have one of these stored in here, get one. It's a little knee pad. Fantastic. I'm going to use it right now. So anyway, so whenever you're ready for your coach, they bring it out. The valet service brings it out. And then they check the tire pressure. They also fill it up with fresh water. Now then, whoever filled it up this time, obviously was maybe new, wasn't completely trained. Now I will say, uh, when I brought this to leisure, I mean, when I brought this to NIRVC's attention, they immediately super apologetic. They actually pulled all of the valets in and retrained everybody. That's how great of a company they are. Uh, companies do make mistakes, but it's how they react to it shows their attention to customer service. NIRVC is top notch, because I did call them about it. So here's what happened. So whenever you go to fill up the tank, you take this from normal city water, you put it up to fill, you attach a hose right here, and it fills up the tank, okay? And then when you're done, you put it back to normal city water, right? Well, somehow the attendant or the valet took this part off, and so he unscrewed all of this, right? He unscrewed this for some reason, I don't know, I've never had this off, it's still off, right? Sorry about that, if that wind noise is, is hitting us right now, it's part of those mile and those winds that were hitting us so anyway took all of this off so he thought this he must have thought this was the fill because he turned it to winterize and left it there whenever you put that to winterize and you turn on the water pump it sucks air from this because this is intended to put into a bucket of antifreeze and suck antifreeze up into the system to winterize right so this was on winterize this was off and this was loose okay so here's what happened. When I turned the water pump on inside, it was just sucking air. And I, no water, of course, just sucking air, had a full tank of, uh, of water. So, and then, so I said, well, that's crazy. I hope my water pump isn't going out. So I come in, I put, hook this up to city water, and this is all leaking from right here. Okay, so I'm really freaking out. Here we are, we're already into Louisiana. When I found this out, nine day trip, am I gonna have water? course called the NIRVC that's whenever they said we'll do whatever it takes to get you fixed up so fantastic company now then what happened was again I turned this back to normal flow and then it bled out the the air out of the water pump and it started working so what happened with this I unscrewed these screws pulled this out as much as I could and there is an attachment back here I just screwed that up uh, screwed that back on and it fixed the leak so everything was great Kind of freaked out at first because I thought, oh my gosh, my entire water system is going to be bad. So, but it all fixed up. So anyway, that was the only issue I had during the own, during the, this nine day trip, 2,500 miles. And that you cannot beat. All right, here I am back in the comfort of my office. I got a good night's sleep last night, well rested, totally recovered from that stressful day of driving. And again, please don't let that deter you or scare you. That does not happen very often. In fact, that's the first time it ever happened to me that I had seven solid hours of uh, huge crosswinds plus that headwind. Um, and so, I mean, you'll experience some crosswinds every once in a while, but not for seven hours. Good grief. That was, that was amazing. But anyway, I do want to say that, uh, it, that totally affected our fuel mileage. Now going down, like I said, it was absolutely gorgeous. It was beautiful, uh, an easy drive all the way down to Florida. We had stops in Louisiana, stops in Alabama, then of course stops in Florida, and that was a beautiful drive. Now then, we got about 16.5 miles per gallon on average with my three liter uh, diesel engine in that Mercedes chassis, uh, which is pretty good. And I have done a real world test where I took miles driven versus gallons used, did that division, and the trip computer is extremely accurate down to you know a couple decimal points, right? And so very confident in what it's telling me. Now then, 
coming back yesterday from that Baton Rouge to Dallas, seven hours, constant winds, constant headwind, constant crosswinds, fighting it all the way. I averaged 14.6 miles the gallon, so basically shaving off two miles the gallon. Now then, in the world of $5 a a gallon diesel, that's not fun. You know, I, I purposely, I stick at 65 miles per hour. So I have found jumping up to 70 um, actually does lower about a mile per gallon as well, uh, just in normal driving. And so I was 65 all of the way uh, on the highways um, and, again, got 14.6 miles a gallon. But I want to go over real quick, go over what did fuel cost. I also want to know, is this going to affect you traveling? Is this something that you're going to say, I'm either not going to go too far from home or I'm not going to RV as much? So put that in the comments down below. Do you plan on being the same? Do you plan on cutting back your driving? Because I will say this cost us quite a bit more than it would have, you know, just even four, five, six months ago. It costs considerably more in fuel. And so I've got it all here in my handy field notes. So let's just get down to the nitty gritty. What did this thing cost us? Now then, I spent a total from when I filled up here um, at home uh, until we got back, it cost $787.29 to drive uh, 2,605 miles. That is pretty significant because it would be, you know, I'm sure it'd be in the four or $500 mark just six months ago. So spending an extra $300 or so, um, I mean, that's pretty significant, right? And so, and diesel prices were different state by state. In Texas, it's under $5. It's in the fours. In fact, when I filled up here at home, it was $4.67 per gallon. Um, and then in Louisiana was the cheapest. Uh, that was $4.48 on a fill-up. And then Florida was the highest with a high of $4.00. No, I'm sorry, $5.36 per gallon. Um, And that was finding that fuel. I noticed that all of the loves and all of those travel stops are considerably higher than if you just go to, say, a racetrack or a quick trip or, you know, just a a basic convenience store uh, filling station. And so the loves, they were, that's where I saw almost $6 a a gallon. I was seeing $5.88, $5.91 at some of these loves on the highway. Now then, we do have a TSD card uh, that you get a huge discount on. It's a fleet card that you can join I'll make a video about that as well at some point. But anyway, uh, but you have to go through the truck lanes. You usually, you usually have to wait 15, 20 minutes in order uh, to get fuel. So is it worth saving 50, 60 cents? Plus, it's only at like Love's uh, TA truck stops and pilot shops, things like that. Um, and so for me, I'd just rather get in and get out even if I had to pay a tad bit more. But fuel was uh, a- extremely uh, higher this trip. Um, not sure if it's going to go down anytime soon, especially with the war in Ukraine, uh, with inflation, all of these things. So now then RV park, park costs. Uh, let's jump over to RV trip wizard, kind of go over my entire trip with you in that and talk about it. Um, we were seeing my low was in the forties uh, for what I paid for an overnight stay in an RV park and then a high of around $77, but for an extremely nice RV park, and I would pay that every day for this particular park. But let's jump over to RV Trip Wizard, and I'll show you my entire trip. We are in RV Trip Wizard. This is how I plan all of my big trips. I don't use it for like weekend trips or anything like that. It's a bit overkill for that, but for this, this is perfect. So check out RV Trip Wizard for sure. For, uh, uh, for a trip planner. Love this thing. As you can see, it shows me each night, each RV park I'm going to stay at. It tells me how much it costs to stay at the RV park, how much gas I'm going to get to get there, how long it's going to take to get between each one. So it is fantastic. But as you can see, our route here, it is great. All of these RV parks were great. A couple that stood out, Azalea Acres in Robertsdale, Alabama, has a Bucky's uh, next to it. So you absolutely cannot beat that. Beautiful park, wonderful people, and, and fantastic dog park. Another one that stood out was, of course, 
Grand Oaks Resort and Museum. This is on a horse farm. This is where the rally was. We stayed there a total of four nights, and I would go back and stay a month. It is a fantastic park. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous on a working horse farm. Now, the one I do not recommend is right here, Peace River RV and Camping Resort. It's not a resort. It's Thousand Trails property. Even want to wonder what a Thousand Trails property is? Well, it's a big corporate-owned RV park. You know, they've got locations nationwide. It's a it's a membership site, so people pay a fee, and then they can stay up to 14 nights for free. Then they have to move on to a different site. So what this is is the, and we stayed at a few of these, and everywhere I've seen it's the same. The park was nice. I mean, it wasn't terrible as far as, it was in Florida. It was along the river, so, of course, had some great scenery. The problem is the employees. The employees treat you more like a commodity than a customer. Um, it's very rules oriented. They have fines. They will fine you for the smallest thing. Um, absolutely ridiculous. N zero customer service. Not friendly at all. Um, we stay away from Thousand Trails if we, if we can, but we had something to do in Wachula, um, and this was uh, very convenient. So we stayed there for one night and then promptly drove back again to Grand Oaks and stayed a night there before going on to uh, stay at a coastline. Um, and then we stayed at a KOA, which was also nice in Baton Rouge, and then uh, back home. So anyway, that is our trip in a nutshell. So RV Trip Wizard, absolutely love it. Get it if you're going to do a big trip like this. All right. So with that said, are you going to go long distances RVing this spring and summer? Again, put that in the comments down below. Um, and I highly suggest if you're a leisure travel van owner, join a uh, travel club in your area. I can't tell you how enjoyable it was to be with 40 other couples that own leisure travel vans not just couples but there was a few single users as well and so then obviously got to meet sandy johnson and we did we did film the video that's going to be upcoming so make sure you hit that subscribe and the notification bell uh, uh, of her installing a 315 amp hour lithionics battery a Xantrex 3000 watt inverter into Mark and Rosanna's 2021 Unity uh, Murphy bed. And um, I mean, it's so easy to do now. When I did it, it was much harder, but there's been, you know, some changes in firmware with the lithionics and things like that, that literally it's just a swap out. So I'll show you how you can get air conditioning in your, um, in your uh, coach using just your battery. And so Sandy is an awesome lady. She's such a help to the community. If you're part of the Leisure Travel Van Enthusiasts or Leisure Travel Van Help Facebook groups, you know uh, she really helps out a ton. And she helped so many people. She installed like 11 uh, smart shunts uh, with people showing them how to do that. And then there was even, even a major problem with an RV that she jumped in and helped. So Sandy, you are a gem. You are such a help and such a blessing to this community. So be watching out for that video where I show how she installs, where you can hopefully DIY it. So, but anyway, I think that's it for this week. And uh, I, I will say, um, I'm going to start on some Tuesdays, be reviewing some gear. Uh, we get so much stuff sent to us um, and to review, and some of it I really want to use. Uh, so this Tuesday, I will be releasing my review video on my Opus uh, uh, lithium battery pack, portable power, power pack with a uh, solar uh, to charge it up. That's great. So that Tuesday, and then back there, if you see, that's my Peter McKinnon Nomadic um, uh, photography bag, a Kickstarter I ordered about a year and a half ago, but due to COVID and all of these things, it just came in literally. When we pulled up with the LTV at the house yesterday, UPS pulled up and handed it to me. So I'll be looking at that. So if you're into photography and stuff and want to see that kind of stuff, I'll probably be doing more of it, those type of videos where I review gear and gadgets on Tuesdays um, because, you know, Tech Tuesday probably already used but anyway <laughs> so uh but i'll be releasing that video about the lithium battery pack uh that you can run cpap machines on you can take it outside of your rig and use it to, to fire up some things so it's a great camping tool so anyway be on the lookout for that but be sure you hit that subscribe button hit the like button um and then we will see you next week